Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I'm joined here. I have with me the council president for the city of Yonkers, Mike Cater. I have the majority leader of the city council, uh, Mike Sabatino. Uh, we have the trustee of the Yonkers Board of Education, uh, Nader Sage, is with us. Um, obviously, uh, we're here today for a very, very special and very, very wonderful announcement. Uh, that is the prom dress giveaway that was put forth by um, you know, by my niece. Casey and, and, and Gianna, Gianna and, and, and the young ladies here from Maria Regina High School. And uh, they've come here today and they're joined uh, with uh, Charlie and Hala Cahill from the, and the Bronx, and I'm sorry, and the Broadway Community Center. Um, you know, prom season's upon us. Uh, prom dresses are expensive. They can cost um, in excess of $100. And, um, you know, usually we all know, because I have a 16-year-old daughter and I have a ton of nieces and nephews, uh, and nieces, I should say, uh, that uh, the dress is usually worn once and then sits in a closet until um, it's used again, um, but usually not by the, even the same person. Uh, what these young ladies did was went out and were able to gather over 100 dresses uh, to, to be made available to uh, people in the community. It's about... Uh, the, the fact that we live in such a wonderfully diverse community, but we also live in a socially diverse community, an economically diverse community. So, you know, we have people who have the ability to do more, and we, of course we have struggling families as well. And what our young ladies have done here, and I'm very, very proud to say this, is that they, re they recognize that. They recognize that, that there are those who struggle. Um, there are those who have challenges. And you know what? What they've done here will make life just a little easier for uh, a young lady and their family to go out and to enjoy that, to enjoy that prom experience. Because we all know that there's nothing uh, more enjoyable. There's no, there's no prouder moment for a mom, a dad, a grandma, a grandpa, aunt, and uncle uh, to see their uh, to see their little girl uh, in that wonderful gown as they go off to celebrate. Uh, the success that they've had in their education. And, uh, and so this is like a twofer. We're celebrating the young people who are going to get to wear these gowns, but we're celebrating these young ladies who are here uh, committed to making the community better. And you know what? What better uh, message can we send uh, to the world than having young people who care about other young people? So uh, what I'd like to do is... Uh, ask the council president if he might want to say a few words, and then I'll follow with the council president, and then of course we'll we'll bring the young ladies up to speak as well. But uh, the council president, Mike Cater. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On uh, behalf of the council and my colleague, Majority Leader Michael Sabatino, we are proud to be here today. Uh, you know, this prom dress giveaway is a collaboration of the Broadway Community Center, many uh, volunteers and people that are generous to donate their dresses. A prom is, it's, it's a national institution uh, in America, but the most important thing, it's a rite of passage. And with the generous uh, giving away of these dresses, now these amazing young ladies are gonna be part of a very important uh, process when they graduate high school, go to college, and become part of the workforce. I hope that this is an example of how people volunteer to give you these dresses and you pay it forward when you become part of the workforce and always pay it forward. So I'm glad that they're going to be part of this very important rite of passage. I'm proud of the Broadway Community Center and uh, the volunteers for putting this together. Enjoy your prom night and be safe. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Council President. Of course, we're the majority leader of the Yonkers City Council, Mike Sabatino. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You know, prom night is a, a special night, and nobody should be denied uh, the ability to go to the prom night. And maybe some of the uh, young ladies who were not able to afford a dress would have not been able to go to the prom, and that would have been terrible. I'm sure most of you in this room remember your prom night. I know, it's almost 50 years ago, but I still remember it. Um, but it's also about community and about sharing. And I think that it's uh, so important that the, the young ladies who thought of this and then the, the people who donated it and the people that are going to be recipients of it, just so that they can go to their special night um, 
as they uh, march upon going grad uh, to their graduation. So I want to compliment everybody, uh, the Broadway Center and everybody that's been involved. And uh, this is a good thing. And let's hope this is the first annual prom dress giveaway. That's wonderful. And uh, of course, uh, Charlie and, and, and Hala are here. Uh, they're very shy. They don't want to say too much. Um, but uh, so we, we uh, again, I just want we to say thank you for coming. Well, thank, thank you so you. much. And, and thank all you. your officials. We really yeah. appreciate it. Uh, and we appreciate that. Uh, we have, obviously, from representing the Maria Regina High School, our principal, and uh, as, uh, those of us who choose to uh, send our children to uh, to a school where um, you know faith is taught the faith so you get a faith-based education I think uh, Marie Regina is certainly one of those fine institutions that uh, people from all over Westchester use and I just really like to ask Valerie Re uh, Valerie Rita to come up and say a few words thank you, Mayor. Great, thank you. good morning um, we all know that beauty comes from within, but a little glitz can't hurt. Mm -hmm. So when we look at Alexa over here, Alexa, show us how beautiful you are, inside and out. <laughs> we know that she could have worn jeans to her prom and looked beautiful, but the dress is a good touch. I am very proud of our young ladies who have put the effort into allowing these dresses to yet live again uh, and make another young lady feel like a princess or a Cinderella. We know that what we give, we get back tenfold. And I'm sure they have in their hearts a great feeling of knowledge that they have given ha happiness and beauty to someone else. Every princess needs a prince. And so on prom night, we know that uh, we're going to have a lot of beautiful princesses. But in my mind, we have one prince. Here he is. <laughs> so thank you, Mayor Spano, for spearheading this. Alexa, stand next to your prom. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> That's very nice, but really, it's my caterers. Oh, well, <laughs> I was Great never a prom you. king. Um, <laughs> nobody, I, I did go to my prom, though. Um, it's it, it, wonderful. I, I, I couldn't be happier. And, you, you know, and I think that we all feel the same way. We're joined by uh, the councilwoman from the first district, Shanae Williams. Sorry. <laughs> okay. um, so keep up the good work. Remember, it's prom season. Uh, we all talk about drinking and driving, or we talk about uh, being responsible. Uh, we talk about um, the many different uh, things that we all hear about. Um, the message is very, very clear. I always say to my kids, if it feels wrong, it usually is. And so if you keep that in your mind, uh, I think that uh, you'll be able to have a really good night. And so uh, with that, I, I think some of you might have some questions. Um, you want to throw them to me unless you want to see me individually. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. A question to Alexa, is that sure. Did you mind telling us sure. what it means to be a recipient of this awesome giveaway? Being a recipient means very much to me and my family as well because without this donation, I most likely would not have been able to make it to my prom. So it's definitely heavily appreciated. So thank you. Can you tell us a little about yourself? Where do you go to school? Um, I'm currently at Gorton High School. I'm 17 years old and <clears throat> extremely grateful for everything. What are you doing? Um, I'm applying to colleges in order to get my degree in education, so I'm definitely looking forward to that. What kind of pressure do the girls at your school feel to kind of step it up and glam it up? Well, prom? it's definitely a pressure overall because, you know, everybody wants to look better than everyone else or equally as beautiful, and building your self-confidence is an issue already. So in order for... I guess you can say it's kind of like a competition, especially with, you can definitely see the worth of the dresses that you wear. So that's definitely an issue. And what'd you like about that one? I love it, it's, it, it compliments me. I, I love the glitter and the shine, and I just like the style overall. Okay, great, thank you. Any other questions? You hear no? from one of the girls from Marie, Maria Regina. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my niece? That's Casey. Casey. Hi. 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 H
pass away. Yeah. Uh, there's you. really no this use. This is Casey D'Ambrosio. She happens to be my niece. So. <laughs> uh, there's no use in having a dress if it's just going to sit in your closet and you only wear it once. So it's good to give back and to, you know, thank you to my friends for helping me give them away and do something good. So it feels good to give back. <laughs> Does it um, cause you to reflect on the good things in your own life and the uh, advantages that you enjoy? Yeah, I'm really extremely grateful for everything I have and, you know, Again, like I said, I have so many dresses, you know, that I'm not going to wear anymore, so to give them away is good. Yeah. Is it C-A-S-E-Y? No, K-A-C-E-Y. K-A-C-E-Y. K -A -C -E -Y. Mm -hmm. um, what about for the principal? Do you plan on doing this more? Is this going to be a yearly thing, maybe? Uh, just a clarification, I'm the president of Maria oh. Regina. Oh. Um, Sorry. Principal's not here Sorry. today. Um, Sorry, I threw that out. <laughs> the, girls, the girls, I'm sure, will do this again next year. Um, yes? Everybody? Yeah. We're all in, right? Uh, Maria Regina has a tradition of uh, community service. As a matter of fact, all of our students, in order to graduate, <laughs> must do community service. So we, we know that, as I said, um, giving is getting. And in any way we can, we want to help those who, um, you know, who need anything. Uh, someday we might. So we will be doing it again next year. Thank you. Can we give you on other topics real quick? Sure thing. Okay. Uh, you know, basically, this budget is going to grow um, year to year by about $34 million. Um, when you look at this budget and you see the growth in this budget, um, it is all in labor contracts and fringes. Um, a little bit towards debt. We have not put one additional program back in our schools. We have not added one additional firefighter. We have not added one additional police officer. No additions to this budget, and yet um, it will grow by $34 million. And what I've been saying uh, at nauseum is that the, you know, the partnership, there's a three-way partnership. Uh, it's with, there are three players here. You have the taxpayers, you have the state of New York, and you have our labor unions. And right now, the only willing participant in trying to solve this budgetary issue has been the taxpayers of the city. A willingness for the city council to even put breaking the tax cap on, on the table. Uh, the unions have said right up to this point, no givebacks. You know, we have, it was just reported in the newspaper, I have 11 firefighters that made close to $300,000 last year. Um, so no get backs from the unions, no additional state aid, no, may, no aim aid, what they call aid to municipalities, uh, in the past seven years. Zero. Zero increases in seven years. Um, that means that the taxpayers are stuck going this alone. And uh, I, I can speak for myself. I know you might want to speak to the council members. But as mayor, they're not going to go at it alone. We, or at least I will not agree to any break of the tax cap unless there is an infusion of additional state aid and or some labor uh, relief from the contracts. And that's the only way that we can make this matter work. If not, uh, then the, cons the consequences to that action are cuts uh, and deep cuts that can really affect the quality of life of the people here of Yonkers. Uh, it's not something we've done in seven years. Matter of fact, for six straight years, uh, we have done nothing, um, you know, like this. Um, but, you know, you cannot continue to allow, even though we have growth, there's a renaissance going on here in Yonkers. We know that the, the, our revenues are growing. But if our labor contracts are outpacing it, well, eventually that will bury us, and we can't let that happen. So, you know, I need to take a hard line here. I, our labor unions have been helpful to us in the past. But we all know that they're some of the most expensive contracts in America. It's a very well-compensated workforce in our city. I don't begrudge them. I think that's good. I think they deserve it. I think they're a great force. But if you're in the top 10 in New York in salaries, but in the bottom third in income level, so that means that uh, the people that work, the bosses, are actually making less money than the people that... Uh, and working for them. So we, we have to kind of come to terms with that. And that's what I've been trying to do. We've been trying to work, uh, and working with the labor leaders in an effort to try and get this thing together. I anticipate that we will. Comma heads will prevail. 
um, but it's not going to be uh, without a lot, of, a lot of hard work. But I just want you all to know I am not agreeing to any break in the tax cap unless there is concessions made from the other two partners here. We know this gets contentious. We know that people, um, nobody ever wants to, to say no. Um, it's, it's the kind of thing that, you know, we owe it to the taxpayers. Uh, to, to run an honest and clean government, obviously. We also owe it to the taxpayers to, to, you know, to only spend what they give us to spend. And if we're in a situation now where, um, where those costs are just driving us out of business, well, we have to bring those costs back in line with what the taxpayers can afford. And so um, our taxpayers are already squeezed beyond belief. I will not go back to them unless uh, there's a partnership. Um, New York State has already abdicated their partnership. They want nothing to do with it. Seven years, no increases in municipal aid. That is, that is almost criminal. But we have to live with what we have. So that means that uh, there are two partners left. That's the taxpayers and our labor leaders. Um, and, you know, uh, they're a good bunch of people, and they represent a fin phenomenal workforce. And, you know, we're going to make sure that, uh, that they continue to be well compensated for it. But the best way to do that is to run a stable government. Because if we can't make ends meet, someone will. And uh, we don't want that. We want to control, control our destiny. Thank you. Okay, thank you. 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 Thank you.